Sometimes life is so unpredictable and strange that you want to slow it down to think about what happened. And sometimes you want to turn it back to do something different. But to my disappointment, we don't have that option. So after the crazy story between me and my mother-in-law, I was faced with a difficult choice. I never thought before that life would put me through something like this. So I'm going to start my story. My name is Adam. I turned 35 not too long ago. I'm dating a wonderful young girl, and it just so happens that we later developed a relationship with her mother. My life has been like an endless soap opera, yet exciting and interesting. After everything that happened, my head is spinning. But let me tell you everything in order. I was in no hurry to build a serious relationship with the opposite sex. First, I wanted to stand firmly on my feet and then already think about a family. And I succeeded. I opened my own business and developed it quite well. Despite the crisis, things were going uphill. And about a year ago, a young girl came to me for an internship. Her name was Helen, and she was 20 years old at the time. She was smart and quick on the uptake. One day, she and I were working late together. Realizing it was too late, I offered to drive her home. On the way home, Helen suggested we stop for dinner, since we were both so worked up that we had forgotten about food. That was our first date. From that day on, we began a relationship that ended in marriage. I hinted at our age difference several times, but Helen didn't care. She replied that it was better to have a reliable spouse who could be relied on than a young guy who couldn't even feed himself. Everything seemed to be going very well, except for one thing. Helen's mother had given birth to her as a young girl, and now she was only 43. Her father had left them when he found out she was pregnant. My mother-in-law was only five years older than me, and she didn't have a spouse. I heard that she sometimes dated others, but when she learned of her daughter's existence, no one wanted to commit to her. Anyway, she started making eyes at me from the first time we met. I did not pay attention to it after all, we met quite rarely. But after we got married, the situation changed radically. At first she came every week, then twice a week, and all this as if to make it easier for Helen to get used to family life. Her mother-in-law may have helped her around the house, but when she was alone in the room with me, she made far from ambiguous illusions. I couldn't understand what she was thinking at the time because I was her daughter's husband. Okay, she didn't care about me, but did she really care what her daughter thought about it? In the end, even that turned out to be a bloomer. About three months after the wedding, my wife told me that my mother-in-law wanted to move in with us. This is where I got into a tough stance that this was not going to happen. We are a separate family and we must build our own future. There is no place for outsiders in our house. That day, my wife and I had our first serious fight. She said that mom is also part of our family. Besides, it is difficult for her to pay the rent alone while we have enough space here not only for the two of us, but also enough for mom. In the end, I revealed my card saying that my mother-in-law is a very attractive and most importantly unmarried woman and there is not such a big age difference between us that I should turn a blind eye to it. When Helen heard these arguments from me, she laughed and said that she trusted me and her mother completely. She would not break her happiness. Oh, Helen, if you only knew how wrong you were. I was unwavering. My mother-in-law can't move into our apartment. I'm sure I'd imagined a hellish life with her looming in front of me all the time. I won that battle, although Helen didn't speak to me for a week afterwards. But I lost another battle when even my sturdy wall cracked. One day we received an invitation to a seminar in another city. I had a lot of work to do, and foolishly I suggested that my wife go there. By that time she had already become a confident specialist. The seminar lasted a whole week. Helen was worried about how we would be a whole week without each other, and in different cities, and about not cooking breakfast and dinner, but I reassured her, saying that I would manage somehow on my own. I'd lived without her for so many years, and I could handle one week. She calmed down, but right before boarding the plane, she blurted out that she had asked my mom to take care of me. I felt the hairs on my head stir, but before I could object, she kissed me on the lips and flew away. I needed to get home as quickly as possible to keep my mother-in-law out, but I didn't have time. Helen had given her mother-in-law her keys in advance of the flight. When I got home, my mother-in-law was already there. From that moment on, the hard days began for me. My mother-in-law, of course, did not openly pester me, 
but she wore very revealing clothes, walked seductively around the apartment, and sometimes touched me inadvertently. I tolerated, gritting my teeth, because in just a week my wife would be back. In order not to provoke my mother-in-law, I began to go to work early in the morning and stay late, but working from morning till night, I was wildly tired and eventually lost my vigilance. On the fifth day after my wife left, I came home late again. My mother-in-law offered me dinner, but I refused, saying that I was very tired and would go to bed. When I was lying on the bed, I felt someone squeezing my shoulders. When I opened my eyes, I saw my mother-in-law giving me a massage. She said that a massage would help me relax, and I relaxed to the fullest. The long absence of intimacy with my wife had played its part. The next morning, Helen came home earlier than planned. It turned out that the informative part of the seminar was over. There were parties scheduled for the last two days of the seminar, and Helen decided not to participate in them, but to go home early. She didn't even call. She decided to surprise me, except it was us who surprised her. Helen came home and found Mom in my arms. As I suspected in all this, she blamed me. Turns out I'd had my eye on my mother-in-law from the start. There's a reason I called her attractive and single. I'm sure I was partly to blame, but my mother-in-law was no angel. I told Helen more than once to keep her mother away from me. Then I decided to keep my mouth shut because I was guilty. After finishing the scandal, Helen left, slamming the door loudly behind her. My mother-in-law got dressed and also ran after her daughter. So I was left alone, and if you think that's the end of it, you're sorely mistaken. Helen wanted to quit my firm, but I wouldn't let her. We decided to take a break from each other for a while and then decide how to live our lives. A few days later, my mother-in-law came to see me again. I wanted to kick her out of the door, but that night we spent together again. Later on, she started to visit me more often, and then she moved in with me. At the time, I thought I'd never get back with Helen. I was wrong again. About a month after the scandal, Helen showed up on my doorstep. She said that she would not allow her legitimate and good husband to be taken away from her and asked that I kick my mother-in-law out on the street. She, as a daughter, would not have the courage to do that. She said she still loves me and wants to spend the rest of her life with me. Now I'm faced with a dilemma. I have my young wife and I love her very much, but if I choose her, I will feel guilty towards her for the rest of my life, and she will remind me of her every chance she gets. On the other hand, mother-in-law is also a very beautiful woman, and now after so many offenses and scandals with my wife, next to her I feel quite well. What to do in this situation I can't think of anything to do. I don't know what to do in this situation.